If you are a Town Hall 11 looking to learn Drag Bat at Town Hall 11, well, in this video, we are going to be breaking down everything that you need to know about Drag Bat. That is right, guys. We are going over Drag Bat here at Town Hall 11. This is an entire breakdown guide to help you guys improve with drag bat here so for starters let's go ahead and go over the funnel very quickly so the funnel is typically done by either using split heroes sui hero or by using e-drags now of course e-drags are going to be you know it depends if you're going to use one or two e-drags and that is really going to depend in terms of chain value so if we look at right here there's some good chain value there if we can see, you know, there's a lot of buildings that if we dropped an e-drag here, it would go like this. So that is exactly what would happen if we did drop an e-drag there. So there's some good chain value and we could easily take advantage of that. On the opposite side, the best area I could see in terms of chain is about here. So that's what you got to kind of think about if you're going to use two e-drags. If you're only using one, then you would use one on one side and then a sui hero on the other. That would carve out the area. But the primary focus is the main reason to why you're doing that funnel is to drive everything into the base. So what do you see on this particular base design that would initiate setting a funnel on this side and on this side? It's because the wizard towers, as you'll see right here, are the wizard towers are right here, here, here. You know, you got a couple wizard towers, you got one up here as well. But the idea though is there are about four wizard towers that you could possibly get with the dragons and the balloons moving in. That is what you've got to really realize with this. You want to enter into an area, you want to funnel into an area where your main portion, your dragons are going in. That is the main part of this. So you're looking for the splash damage. On top of this, you want to look at the sweepers. You want to look at the eagle. Those are going to be other things that you should be getting as well. So now as we showcase the funnel here, I want to kind of talk to you guys uh, basically about what the key objectives are. And as I've said, you're of course looking for as much of the splash damage defenses as possible. This means that you're looking for as many wizard towers as possible. You're looking for maybe getting an inferno. If not, that's fine. But you should have enough bat spells at least to get through the first inferno. Outside of that, though, you're also looking for the eagle, which is definitely another splash building that you should take out. So you'll see that we've already set two funnels while I was talking about that. So now we have a cut off here. So now that this means everything is driving into the base, we'll, we will be able to get down those two wizard towers right there and also get a third one. So if we zoom in here, you can see that one wizard tower went down. Everything is starting to move into the second one. We're dealing with the enemy CC. Another thing is we're using the warden very early over the rage as well. We're using that because they're driving into the core of the base. We're also protecting some of those balloons so that, that then they could take down some of the defenses and protects them from the enemy queen now on top of this what we're going to be seeing next is a bat bomb a little bit later the first initial rage is usually to get your dragons in so now this is where we are going to be doing our bat bomb so what you'll see is if we put this on half speed you're going to see rage freeze and then bats the main reason to why we are putting it on both of these defenses is because they're t they're basically very close together, meaning that we can get value from just freezing those two buildings. We don't need to use two free spells. So we'll easily get rid of both of them without having to worry. And that's going to be the big thing about this one. So you see that we still have another Inferno up, but we also have another free spell, which of course we could either use depending on how everything is, but you can see that we're still, we still have a lot of dragons. We still have balloons up and we'll be able to get through that Inferno, even though the bats didn't get through it. So of course, if we had dragons and we did get that inferno it would have been an easy wreck so you got to keep that in mind if you're seeing one single one multi go for the multi and then basically either bat wave or bat bomb a wizard tower and you'll easily get through that single as well so that's a really simple way of using this strategy hopefully this kind of helps you guys plan out a little bit better but i hope that other than that 
it kind of helps you guys see exactly what you're looking for. This is really not a hard attack by any means. So it's a lot easier for you guys to see what's going on in an attack like this. So with that being said, this gives you guys your first example, the first variation of using it. No E-Drag, no Ice Golem, no Lava Hound. So now we're going to move on into another one where we're going to be seeing two E-Drags. So we've got another variation here. We're going to be looking at the use of the E-Drag. And then on top of that, we're going to be looking at how to use this uh, with a Bat Wave. So that's going to be something a little bit different here within this example, but there's a little bit more. Now, this is a pretty common base design. I'm not sure if anyone has seen this, but 100%, this is a pretty easy base to hit, even if they are, there's double multis. So just keep that in mind. If there's double singles, easy. But if there's double multis, you should still be able to do it as well. It should be doable. So what we're going to be seeing here first is we are going to first mainly take a look at the use of the E-Drag. So what we are going to be seeing first is we're going to be dropping the balloon that's going to be used as a, you know, as a Coca Loon in order to soak up any seeking air mines there. We're going to use the E-Drag there to sort of clear out this whole section here in order to make sure that we are creating a funnel on this side. So that's going to now allow us to sort of get something made from there. Now, on the opposite side, we're using a Sui hero like, you know, just like splitting the heroes, but we're using both heroes together. And what this allows us to do is get our pathing almost like this into the base. Pretty wide funnel or a pretty wide pathing, but we can still get a lot of our dragons into the base. Remember, though, that we want to make sure that we are using our dragons, keeping them alive, using the warden ability in order to make sure that they are staying alive for as much as possible. That way it kind of allows us to get everything into the base and all set. Now, what we're, what we're going to see right now is we're going to see a bat wave. And this is really fast, trust me. So I want to kind of catch up, catch up with you guys to explain a couple things. Of course, dealing with the enemy CC like you see right here. We're dealing with the baby dragon. Now, on top of this, what we're going to be noticing as well is the use of this, the Stone Slammer going into the Multi Inferno. Of course, it's going for the Air Sweeper, but we will still be able to get to that Multi Inferno. After that, though, we should be able to do a Bat Wave, and we're guaranteed to basically remove the rest of the base with this Bat Wave. So we're going to see that. We're going to mainly focus on this. It's very, very important. So you'll see everything is going to start moving into the... Uh, right into the archer tower we're going to freeze up the wizard tower because that's where everything is going to be moving so we're going to zoom in here just so that then you guys can see what's going on and what we are doing so you can see that everything is moving through we're using our free spells on top of the wizard towers in order to make sure that we are getting through them and once we've done so we're easily going to allow ourselves to clear through the rest of the base that is how simple the bat spells or in terms of the bat wave is so this gives you guys a really solid opportunity to sort of use a bat wave. However, here, you know, of course, we did have the warden and we only have one dragon up. So basically, you know, for the most part, the bats will be able to clear up the rest of it. However, though, even though that this wasn't such a complete wreckage, hopefully this still kind of helps you guys really learn how to use drag bat, especially on this common style of base. If I, if it were me, I would definitely use a bat bomb on this base instead of a bat wave. But other than that, you can, you guys can still use a bat wave, but I think a bat bomb is 100% better and can be used a lot more. So let's go ahead and move on into another example using ice golems. So we've got another example, another variation. This time we're going to look at ice golems. Now, of course, I don't have access for the lava hounds, but we're going to look at two examples using ice golems, and we're going to open your guys' mind to using ice golems in terms of keeping the or keeping that tankage for the bats. So what we're going to be seeing here, of course, is using the E-Drag on one side and the Sui Hero on the other. This allows us to get into the base, and you'll see that we are going into those air supers, more specifically one of them that's going to be pushing back our dragons. But good thing though, it's not pushing them away or anything, so we have easy paddling thanks to this dead zone. But on top of this, let's first really focus in on these bottom two wizard towers. So as long as we are keeping our ice golems 
in, you know, on the outside, very close to the radius of the wizard towers. So even if we dropped it here and it went over here, it would still be tanking. And over here, we would use this ice golem right here on top of this mortar in order to tank there for the bats as well. The reason the ice golems are typically used with bats is they can tank for the wizard towers. They only cost 15 housing space. So it's almost like you're bringing a golem, but you're bringing two ice golems here. And they could definitely help tank for your bats on wizard towers. Now, does this mean that this is a substitute for using a freeze? No because you will still need to use a freeze, especially when you're using a bat bomb. But this is an option. This is something that you can try out and use. You saw in the first two examples that there were no ice golems, so you don't always need them. But if you like to use them, then that's definitely gonna be a way for you to get something from your, from your entire attack, and more specifically from your bats. So on one side here, we're gonna be using a or we're going to use the E-Drag in order to set that side of the funnel. And then on the other side, we're going to be using the Sui Hero, and we're going to be able to take down the air defense as well. So now we have some pretty easy pathing entering into the base, almost kind of like this, due to the nature of this dead zone. Now we can also send the Stone Slammer a little bit later where the air defense is, or we can sort of start to send in every, like you know it a little bit later. So that's where we're going to be sending in that Stone Slammer. So notice how we're popping the Warren ability. We're allowing ourselves to protect the dragons as they enter in. We're using the Stone Slammer on the opposite side in order to keep the dragons into the base and, you know, forcing them not to go through the, through the dead zone and going over to those archer towers. Now, I want to set your guys' attention over to this section right here. So I'm going to zoom in. Because you're going to see that the ice golem there is tanking. Then we're going to be dropping a freeze and bats. Notice how we're not using a rage spell. Typically, you're going to be using a rage spell, but in this case, we are not. So now you'll see on the other, on the other side as well is we're using another ice golem. And that's going to be used there to tank for the bats there. Really easy stuff. And you guys can see the reason to why... Uh, the ice golems are being used a lot more frequently in terms of drag bats. You guys may have seen this from other content creators or even from other videos I've covered with this. You guys can definitely tell that it is still very, very simple. Of course, I know that there is a little bit of a lag or, you know, whatever, a little bit of stuttering going on. I'm not sure what's going on, but you guys can still get the idea, even though, you know, it's here and there, some, some issues here. But other than that, though, Getting rid of those wizard towers on top of the bats is really no more thanks to the ice golems. Now, this is only two ice golems. You can bring only one as well, especially if you want to bring more loons, more drags, more cleanup. That's what you can definitely prefer. So let's go ahead and show you guys another example using the ice golems. So here we go, guys. We've got the final example for this guide. And what I want you guys to really understand is, of course, drag bat is still fairly simple. So the ice golem here, we're using one ice golem, and that's going to be used right here. Uh, so we're going to make sure that we are getting as much of the value down as we can with the dragons. But this ice golem is going to be used on top of the wizard tower in order to make sure that the wizard tower is staying tanked for and the bat wave can go in. So this is another example of using the bat wave. So if you've been interested in using bat wave against double singles or double multis, I've given you that option in these two or in this video. So again, what you're going to see differently here is we're going to use a baby dragon and a dragon to set the funnel on this side. And then what we're going to be doing on the opposite side is using a Sui hero. So our pathing now kind of looks a little bit, it's a little big, but we've got something like this moving in, which means we're getting two, multi, two wizard towers and one multi inferno with everything driving in. Now, when you're doing a bat wave, you want three to four free spells. So that means that you're not bringing a poison, but you should still be able to deal with the enemy CC. Even if it's an E-drag, you should be able to take care of it. So you'll see on one side, we're using a Sui hero. The other side, we're using a baby dragon and a dragon. So this is going to carve out the sort of funnel, as I've explained a little bit earlier. And we're just allowing ourselves to get that value and guarantee us 
to use that bat wave to get the three star. So you'll see as everything drives in, we're making sure that we can get everything into the base. So we're going to zoom in right here just to show you guys what is exactly going on. The warden is being used over the dragons and the balloons to protect them through the queen and also through the core. And then we're using those rage spells to get them right through. We got down the multi. So a lot of easy value here. Now, what we're going to be doing on this side over here is once we're able to get just a little bit more, we're going to use the ice golem there. It's going to tank for that wizard tower, and then we're going to use the bat wave right behind it. That means that we're going to clear up this Tesla farm, and not just that, but also take down the wizard tower as well, and also the multi inferno, thanks to the dragons, as they will be able to sort of clear out that multi inferno, deal with the wizard tower with the next freeze, and then just easily get through the rest of it, maybe freeze up the expo as well, since if it's not being overwhelmed, it could definitely take down your bats. So that is another good use of the freeze. Other than that, though, easily getting the three stars. So I hope that this video kind of helps you guys widens your search in terms of base identification. And you can definitely tell within all of these examples is that they gave definitely some great base identification. You saw where they were entering into, and you also saw what value they were getting in terms of their entry. Outside of that, though, hopefully this helps you guys improve using bats. Feel free to go ahead and leave a like on the video. It really means a lot. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you guys don't miss any of my content here on YouTube. Don't forget to also go ahead and follow me over on Twitch and Mad and also Trovo. So definitely make sure that you guys are following there. We are building up the streaming and hopefully we will be able to be live at some point. Also, feel free to go ahead and join my community discord or follow me on any of my social medias, which are in the description below. On top of that, if you guys want to support me anywhere further, then maybe go ahead and join as a channel member or even subscribe to me over on Twitch. But with that being said, guys, hopefully this is, that this video helps you guys a lot. Remember to share with your clanmates so that they can use Dragbat better and become better attackers within Clash of Clans to improve their attacks. But with that being said, guys, that's going to do it for the video. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll be seeing you guys next time. Corrupt, signing out.